People look at stories through different lenses. I have my own personal take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Making the headlines last week, lots of cricket. Wendy's women lead Pakistan 3-1 in the ODI series, and Chris Gale breaks out of a slump to smash 67 of 38 balls as the Wendy's men defeat Australia in the T20 series. Hello and welcome to another edition of In Case You Missed It. This week I have another very special guest who will be helping me look back at the week's biggest events. I'm pleased to be joined by Windy's woman skipper, Stefani Taylor. Welcome, Steph. Hi. Congratulations. You are back to number one for ODI cricket uh, as a batswoman as well as all-rounders. Number one again. Those dominant performances against Pakistan. How does it feel? Well, um, it feels good. Nasira always have to keep reminding me about these things because I never look to know when a when I've jumped up or when I've actually declined. So yeah, it's good to have that reminder and you know, also know that you've been doing great things. Most times the athletes never follow these things. We as analysts, you know, we're always on the ball looking, you know, looking on at what you all are doing. So being number one, does that make you feel any sort of pressure? Uh, no, because uh, um, you know, someone asked me, someone asked me that question, and um, because I don't understand the, the, the point system, I never really get caught up in that. Um, I try to enjoy the moment and try to build on that. Okay, so I'm continuing congratulating you, and that must feel very well because this time it's for the three 0 sweep of Pakistan. You know how difficult was it to get that T20 win, especially because of the pandemic, and you know not being able to play as much cricket. Yeah, it's, you know it was very important for us. Um, we've had we haven't had a win in such a long time, and especially a series win at that. Um, you know, when we went to England, that was really hard for us because it was around the pandemic and um, we never had any kind of training before we went on to England. So um, everything we had to do there, um, so we never really get going. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been really nice to, you know, get back um, and get back in winning, winning streak. Well, you also have been working with some very young players, you know, um, a younger bunch. What do you think about the upcoming talent pool that you have to work with? You're number one and you're looking on at these youngsters coming up. What do you make of them? Uh, they're very good to watch. Um, I'm now actually here watching, watching the A team playing against um, Pakistan A. Um, you know, they look very vibrant out there. It seems like they're enjoying what they do, um, what they're doing. And, you know, it's important for us too, because, you know, when I look at myself, I'm like, you know, um, probably retire very soon. And you want to know that you, you leave in, you know, West Indies cricket in, in good hands. Um, so I think, you know, these girls are the future and, you know, we just have to keep supporting them. Steph, did you just say retire soon? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, of course, I know the fans, they would wonder what West Indies cricket would be like without you. So we're not even going to think about that right now. 43 not out, 4 for 17, one of your best performances in T20 cricket. Personally, what did it mean to you to put together such a strong showing? You know, and I want you to tell us a bit about the work that went into that. Because many a times we see the success, we don't understand the hard work. Um... Um, one of the things um, that I, you know, I consciously did was to make some changes to myself. Um, that's one, get fitter, and two, eat a lot better. Um, because when you look at the top athletes, um, the work that they put in comes with, you know, the fitness and eating well. And, you know, I said to myself that, you know, I want to make that conscious effort um, in order to go out there and 
you know, perform for a long period of time, I need to get fitter. I need yeah. to start eating better. So, you know, one thing I, I must say is that I'm really pleased with that. Definitely. And of course, you're reaping the benefits of, you know, those little adjustments. So the T20s, that's over. And then you began the ODIs, a very different format. And you adjusted so well. Three for 29, 105 not out. When we, th when we thought that, all right, that was it for you in the T20. You came even better in the ODIs. What else are we expecting from you, Steph? I'm not sure. Um, we have one more game to go, and I would really like to end on a positive note. Um, you know, it's, I know for me it's very important. I've been stuck on uh, five five hundred for the long for the longest while, and then when I when I hit my hit the hundred the other day, it took probably about eight years. So I definitely don't want it to be another eight years. So yeah, I know a lot of work that I have to have to a lot of work that needs to be done where you know to consistently hitting those marks yeah as an analyst you know a lot of times uh we talk about when the Wendy's women do badly, right? And you all have been in a slump for some time. It felt um, so refreshing to see you come out of that slump, even amid a pandemic. Based on where West Indies women are right now, what would you say is our strongest asset? Uh, we're not looking at anything um, specific, to be fair. Um, we, we know that we've been We've been on the down for a while. Um, we have, you know, new coaches, um, you know, giving us players the confidence to go out there and, you know, reignite that spark that was missing. And I think that that's good. I think especially with, you know, for me, um, you know, I feel like I've been missing that, that spark for a long time. And yeah. to have a batting coach like Robert Samuel, who will sit with me and go through my game, I think that was really important. Um, you know, I think for us, it's more about us and, you know, trying not to get ahead of ourselves. Um, we have a lot of critic coming up and we, we know that the qualifiers is a really big thing. Um, yeah. And if, if we don't, if we don't perform well in that, we won't be able to make the World Cup. So I think that's where we're looking ahead, you know, um, to make sure that we we play well um, consistently and, you know, go on to the World Cup. Definitely. Well, another story that made the headlines this week was Chris Gale, a fellow Jamaican. He became the first player to score 14,000 T20 runs. He smashed 67 of 38 balls. How proud were you, you know, just looking on at him? Like, he still has what it takes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was really proud. Like when I when I saw that, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it was even for fourteen thousand runs. Yeah. Uh, where did all of that come from? Where? Yeah, did that's, <laughs> thing, that's that's just unbelievable. Definitely. Well, you know, some fans they take issues with everything, and they they're upset that he's still playing at forty one. As a captain yourself, would you pick him in your squad, your T Twenty squad, Chris Gale? <laughs> um. I think it would be a tough one. I think I'm really big on, on on youngsters, but yeah, I think I would definitely give him probably a year. Um, say you know, enjoy this year and um, yeah, give me something good. But I mean, time times times things and times are changed changing, um, and I've changed. So yeah, it's different. He still got what it takes to to go out there and still perform. So, yeah, what better you need, especially in T20, you need excitement. And Chris Gale is definitely the, the type of person who could give you that, for sure. Definitely. So before we go, another great Jamaican woman, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price. She's been in the headlines and she always seems to deliver. Do you see her getting her third straight Olympic gold? Are you rooting for Shelly? Oh, yeah, of course. She's a Jamaican. Um, of course, I think Shelly... Shelly, yeah, she she definitely have what it takes. Um, she seems like she's on a mission. Um, her son seems like he he's a big motivation for her. Um, yeah, and I'll definitely be rooting for her. Well, Steph, it has been a pleasure looking back at the week in sports with you. I wish you the best of luck. Continue to break records and set some new ones. 
Thank you. Bye for now. Well, that's a wrap for this week's. In case you missed it, be sure to like, share and comment. And I look forward to hearing your opinions on this week's topics. I invite you to stay safe and I'll see you next week.